hello, how are you doing? Um, I, I, I took your email and I de-identified it and then I put, um, I highlighted the, some of the things that we need to research. So number one, you already got that one figured out, postpartum depression, that definitely shows up in the DSM. So, and a population, you get to pick the population, but I think overwhelmingly it's going to be women who have recently had a child. Um, but um, I, I can show you ways around that. Um, but we'll, we'll assume that that's the way to go. So the number two introduction, we have to summarize what we know about the disorder and the population and all these different questions. And I saw you can use peer reviewed references or government websites. Let me show you the coolest thing. If you go to USA.gov, this represents all of the federal and state agencies that are publishing information, which is a lot of them. And so if you, for example, are the National Institute of Mental Health, you'll be um, talking about all sorts of different disorders that show up in the DSM, but you'll also talk about treatments. You'll also have information for people suffering from different disorders. It's really great. State governments have um, health agencies. There's a federal health agencies. There's a Center for Disease Control. Um, there's all sorts of things going on, and you can search right here. And just 10, 15 years ago, this interface was terrible, but now that so many more people are online, it's really great. So if we just put in postpartum depression, let me show you some of the sites that I recommend. So at the outset, it's gonna have a definition. And this one, if you look at the URL, is it's like from a database. Um, where it has articles and things like that. I don't think this is the best place to go. However, this one, womenshealth.gov, I think would be amazing, excellent. National Institute of Health, really good. National Institute of Mental Health, that one's probably going to be one of the better ones. Um, the Center for Disease Control, that's going to be really great. And all of these, PubMed's okay. Uh, that you're getting more into databases thing, things like that. So what I would recommend is go through these and see if you can answer questions with those and cite them as you go. These are not scholarly sources, uh, but they do they fit that government sources. And so these are communications from the CDC or the NIMH or NIH. These are communications typically to people who are suffering from this disorder. So it's going to be really great um, compact language where they're just getting to the point really quickly. So it's really good. I don't know if you're going to find the all of the answers to the questions that you need to have here, um, like how large is the population and things like that. But we can move on um, to number three, and you might find some of the answers to those things too. But let me know if you miss anything, and we can focus on that specifically. So state of the art. How do we find state of the art? of an intervention approach to the problem. Um, and what are the strengths and limitations? Describe several interventions. And how do you do all of that? You go to the scholarship. So there's a couple of places I'm going to show you. The first one is probably going to be one of the um, easiest ones to access because of the way that you can break out questions. Um, it's under databases. And it's called PsychInfo, so under the letter P. And I always search for it instead of scrolling down. And I always put the H in. So here it is, it's this one. And you have to click on the, the smaller red link. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe an oversight. Maybe they need to fix it. So this database is all psychology. Um, so psychology, they're going to talk a lot about disorders and populations and um, comorbidities and a whole bunch of different things like that. But a lot of it's going to be talking about interventions. So you don't necessarily need to have that keyword in there. Um, when you're in one of these um, fancier databases, um, you, it's good to put it in quotes. So to look for postpartum and depression together. Um, they, typically, they are going to be together, um, but it's good to stick it in quotes, so to look for those two words chunked together. And you could do that with a whole string of words if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to go.
go back to the document briefly. Does it have to be peer reviewed? Oh, it does have to be peer reviewed. Peer reviewed references. How can you tell if something is peer reviewed? Well, it's kind of hard. You have to ask a librarian. Um, but what you can do, some of these databases will have this little peer review checkbox. It doesn't always work because you might get letters to the editor and other things that show up in peer reviewed journals, but that's one way to do it. And then, so we want to find state of the art. Um, postpartum depression has been around for a long time and diagnoses and interventions have changed a lot over the years. And so if you go back to like the 1950s and the 60s, it was wildly different than it is in the, maybe like the 80s and the 90s, and that's quite different than the way it is today. So one clue is date. So see, it goes back to 1964. Um, let's go up to, so I would say 2009, 2010 is when social media took off and how they were able to um, do research and disseminate information and have communication. It changed a lot. So I think that's a good time to bring it up to. But still, look at this. There's 2,980 articles. <laughs> How do we find state of the art out of that? It's crazy. There's a couple things you can do. One, you can go into subject. Uh, well, a couple, one thing is you could narrow it down to like the current five years. Maybe we should do that. Let's go up to 2015. We'll stop. Current six years. That's one way of narrowing it down. <laughs> Still, there's 1,800. So what you can do, so all of these things being talked about right now are things that are being proposed or experimented on. But how do you know if something is successful? I think if you can tell if something's been published more than once and people are trying it in a bunch of different ways, then you can tell it's a successful way. So if you go to subject right here, you'll be able to see, and I'll click on show more, you'll be able to see what's being talked about in the last five years. Um, so obviously that's going to be the top one. Obviously the population is going to be a big one. But we're going to see things like risk factors. That's something you could talk about. So is somebody genetically predisposed or if you have a cultural background or whatever. Um, there's also comorbidity, anxiety. Here's interventions. And look, there's only 37, but that's just because they don't use the, the term intervention for everything. Um, treatment. So let me start clicking on some of these. Say we're looking for interventions, test construction, Mental health, that doesn't sound like an intervention. Okay, we'll do that one. Ooh, social support. That sounds like an intervention. Parenting, I don't know. Drug therapy, that's an intervention. Diagnosis is something that might be different. Fathers are fathers. Is this going to be something about an intervention or counseling? You could click on it. You could not click on it. Hydrocortisone. That sounds like an intervention. Or it's maybe like maybe something that causes a symptom. Demographic, distress, nursing, screening. So you get the idea. Oh, prevention. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> I have two kids, so I'm, I'm laughing. I'm just like, well, yeah, sleep's going to help a lot. We had a very fussy kid. Uh, oh, treatment effectiveness. You get the idea. When you click on update, you're limiting to those things that might be considered an intervention. And so it'll narrow it down even farther from the 1800. Now it's only 107. What you would have to do if I was, if I was a cruel librarian is I would say, oh, now you have to go through all of these and look for prevalence um, among these and, and see if they, they talk about an intervention more than any other one. But do you remember that USA.gov?
So that's one way of finding those. But work with the stuff that you've already got. Postpartum depression, women's health.gov. And in these little things, they're going to talk about treatments. And these are going to be relatively up to date. So don't be afraid of going back and forth. Let's see if they have a treatment. Causes, there's risk factors. What should I do if I have it? How's postpartum depression treated? It's not cheating to use this as a starting point, but you can find those articles. So if you see here the therapy um, or the medicine, they might talk about these different things. Then you can go back and look at those in, this, in the last five years and look for those things. So go back and forth and find those keywords. Um, and I think you'll find some of those things um, come out easier. Let me show you another database. Oh, by the way, the Find It, View It button, if it doesn't come in full text, I think I showed you this in another video, but just in case. I've done, I've done like 50 videos this month, so I'm lost in what I've done and what I haven't done. When you click on that Find It, View It button, it will show in the library catalog um, whether you can get full text or not. If you can't get full text and it just says request an article, this is a link to a free service where you can get it um, re requested from another library. I mean, it's free for you. So you just click on that, click on J. Willard Merritt Library. You might have to fill out a form the first time that you go through this. Um, but if you've already filled out the form, then you just go down and click submit. And then in about a day, they'll send you the article. Let me show you another database. The most important thing, like what's what's hot right now in this particular field of therapy. Let me show you, uh, go to the letter W, and there's something right at the top called Web of Knowledge, Web of Science. They're both kind of the same thing. They just changed the name over the years. Web of Science is cool because you can see how many people have linked to something. Whoops, post power and get on. I'm putting it in quotes. And I'm just going to search for that. Do I have to move my head? I think I have to move my head. Okay, so if you see, there, there's like 7,000 results. These are all mostly scholarly and, and peer reviewed. These are really great. Um, but if you see over here, the number of times this one has been cited is zero, but that's because it's published in the future. So this is just an index. They're calling dibs on that particular topic, and the paper is forthcoming. This is like a pre-press sort of a thing. But what you can do is you can look at the number of times that something has been cited. So I'm going to click on that right there. And then you'll be able to see... Um, that this meta-analysis, rates and risk of postpartum depression, um, was so important, it's rather old, but it was so important that these 1,979 articles couldn't have been published unless they cited this one. How do we find out? So I would recommend going through these and see if they've got something going on. Preeclampsia, that's high blood pressure. Um, but what you can do is you can still sort by the number of times cited, but we can narrow down to the last five years. And this is where we find that state of the art. The numbers will be smaller, but it's still a measurement of how impactful an article is be, could be. So I would suggest going through, oh, there's 2,000, but go through like a few pages of this that are ordered by the number of times cited, and you'll start to see some of the state-of-the-art things. So here's one right here. Continuous support for women during childbirth. So that community always being there for, for somebody helps out. Here's psychological treatment treatments for 
um, low and middle income countries. There's child outcome. This one, it seems random, doesn't it? But it's been cited 115 times. So it would be worthwhile going in and finding out what Brexa, Brexa alone is. Did it work? Um, there's, there's a population, how many people have it? That answers one of your questions you're looking for. So you get the idea. Um, this is how I would approach it from the outset. Um, start digging in and start trying to answer some of those questions. Um, and then come back and let me know if you got frustrated or stuck or if there's certain things that you couldn't quite get. And I'm happy to help. Okay.